Snack and Learn webinar. My name is Maria Pia Angelino, and today I will be talking about driving digital transformation in technical standards for the UK highway sector. Over the past 10 years, I've been leading specialist consultancy services in development, implementation and improvement of standards and standardization processes at national and international level. I've got a PhD in excellence in standards development, and I'm currently involved in technical committee work nationally and internationally, including the evolution of the structural Eurocodes as the sole technical reviewer across Europe. Today, I'll be sharing some key insights into a major work program done in the UK, which led to a transformation in culture, tools and processes applied to develop standards. There will be time for questions at the end, so please write them in the questions box of your GoToWebinar control panel during the presentation. Questions will then be read by the organizer, and the presentation is now available in the handout box in your GoToWebinar platform. So let me start with the agenda for today. I'll start giving an overview of the strategic consultancy services we um, provide on technical standard. I will then present the key highlights and objectives for the work. I'm then going to explain our approach to provide engineering and digital support. Key achievements are then outlined, including financial savings. I will then summarize the key takeaways, which can be helpful for others dealing with similar issues in other countries or other sectors. And I will finish off on where we are now and what is next. Over the past 10 years, there has been an increasing interest in the role of standards to enable innovation and drive efficiencies. Several high-profile initiatives were conducted in the UK, uh, which reflected the general concern about the complexity of the current approach to standardization. Often we deal with complex systems of standards and client specifications, which operate at many levels, ranging from local to national and international level. And I'm sure that there's a wide experience by um, many of you. Uh, to be in a similar situation where you have to work with many different documents and standards in a system of documents. And from the perspective of designers and clients, the situations can be really challenging. And WSP has been actively um, involved in the development of standards and specifications for over 25 years in the UK infrastructure sector, shaping best practice through industry bodies and steering groups. We've got access to latest academic research on excellence in standards development, including my PhD work. And we've also got access to latest developments in the field of digitalization of standards and infrastructure. The project presented today is an example of the approach we took and the benefits it gave to our client and the wider UK construction industry. So starting with some key highlights, the client organization is National Highways, which is a government body responsible for managing the strategic road network in England and for developing and maintaining the standards used for the design, maintenance and operations of the whole UK network. Um, so there was an important interface with the wider UK bodies managing the network also in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The project involved one of the volume sets developed by National Highways, which is the design manual for roads and bridges, the DMRB. And I'll be using this acronym several times today. So I'm referring to the design manual for roads and bridges. The driver for this work was an obligation set by the UK Department of Transport to refresh the DMRB by the end of March 2020, considering a few issues I'll mention in a second. And generally speaking, the impact of this work is on the designers of the whole UK network, plus thousands of DMRB users nationally and internationally. To give some key numbers that you can see on the right hand side of the screen, the DMRB was made up of 394 documents for almost 15,000 pages of technical content. It had expanded over time to cover many topics, becoming cumbersome and in need of updating. Most of the documents were out of date and the average age was about 15 years, although there were some documents which were about 30 years old. 
uh, such documents were also inconsistent in style and format, having been developed again over the years against different rules. And that also led to misinterpretation of content and a significant number of departure applications submitted against the standards. So I'm talking about the 2,000 departures per year, which is provided on the screen, costing millions to process every year to national highways. Finally, there were hundreds of stakeholders involved throughout the process, including technical authors, reviewers, approvers, and ultimately users. So to summarize the key objectives of this work, we were asked to provide engineering and digital support to enhance the usability structure and content of the design manual for roads and bridges, the DMRB, enhance the efficiency of production and maintenance of such standards, and unlock the potential of digital innovations. So we felt from discussion with client that this was a fantastic opportunity to modernize with a new and radical approach, such an important volume set. So moving on on our approach, we assembled a team of experts in the field of standards development, highway project delivery, digital technologies to deliver this project. And our underlying principle was to consider this work as a complex system with three interrelated areas. People, um, this was all about stakeholders and change management and consultation and supporting the client to define the scope, the vision and the strategy for managing the work. Processes, and in this case, uh, this is about us leading the improvements of governance processes through established continuous improvement practices and tools. So we actually led the development of the technical standard enterprise system and in particular we employed use of technology and IT tools to work more efficiently. So what I'm going to do now is to cover each of these area, areas to clarify in a bit more detail what we've done to support our client. So we led first of all a focused consultation across the UK construction industry. We involved over 100 organizations, uh, including design um, organizations, large organizations, small and medium enterprises, constructors, software developers, other client organizations, local authorities. And we took a disciplined approach to expose different views and achieve consensus positions on key themes. You can imagine how with so many people involved, the different expectations of what the future DMRB um, should look like. So we had to manage this initial stage very carefully to provide something which gave benefits to the client, but also to the whole supply chain. And our method here was based on the successful approach adopted a European level on the evolution of the structural Eurocodes. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Eurocodes, um, in Europe, um, there's a suite of standards, over 50 standards, um, which are developed for the design of um, structures, bridges, civil engineering works. Um, and we led that um, evolution um, uh, and the learning from that work has been used significantly to shape the approach for this consultation. The result of the consultation was then a set of 11 recommendations that you can see on the screen on the right hand side. Um, and these recommendations guided the delivery of the work from the start to completion. Um, I just want to emphasize the importance of defining such recommendations, the vision statement, because that was one of the most successful things that was done for this work, helping um, the delivery team to focus on what was really needed uh, for the entire period. So following the WSP continuous improvement approach of defining understanding and resolving, and you can see a screenshot on the screen. We reviewed the whole governance process for standards to apply a proportionate approach to the level of governance required. Each governance step was challenged to remove unnecessary wasteful processes and maximize the value of the time given by those engaging with document development. Clear roles and responsibilities were defined and the workflows were digitized, as you can see at the center um, of the screen. And in conjunction with that, the whole work program 
So all the documents to be redrafted. And as I said before, we are talking about almost 400 standards. Um, the whole work program was digitized to provide better visibility and control. We used a program management tool called JIRA, which was adapted to the need of the program to plan and track and report on the progress made. And you can see on the right hand side of the screen, um, a screenshot of uh, relevant um, pages taken from, from JIRA. And it was also used to automate communication to stakeholders, um, ensuring quality and consistency of information provided. So it was a very successful platform to use. Drafting the standards, of course, was a major focus for the whole work program. We worked closely with the client to identify the quality issues affecting the use of the documents. And on this slide, you can see an example of typical clauses, uh, 423 at the center of the page, which is a very long paragraph containing a variety of different types of information, where there is not a clear hierarchy of content, what should be done, a lot of misinterpretation of the actual requirements. So the new drafting rules we developed provided the clearer, more concise requirements with a clear distinction between requirements and advice. And you can see um, the example of section two, assessment processes, uh, which is what the previous clause then became with a clear distinction between requirements and advice with a new numbering system, setting two level numbers for requirements and three level numbers for advice. And this was a very successful approach because then we were able to, um, to code these uh, drafting rules and principles into a completely new innovative tool called CARS, Collaborative Authoring and Review System. Um, so this is on the next slide. You can see some example, a demo of how it works. So CARS enables multiple people to work on the same document at the same time, and it also contains the authoring rules and flag errors, helping technical authors to draft good quality documents. It also embeds a review functionality where reviewers can add their own um, comments during the consultation period. And that makes the review process really straightforward, reducing the risk of missing content and comments, of course. And the positive impact of the new drafting rules and CARS can be seen at four different levels. We've developed clear and unambiguous requirements uh, with clarity of performance level sought, thus removing barriers to innovation. We updated advice, which is now clearer and targeted to support requirements. We reduced the drafting cost significantly, and I'll cover that in a second with more details on uh, the actual savings. Um, and the new style documents led to an important reduction in number of departures. So I'll share some key efficiencies towards the end of the presentation. So CARS and JIRA that I mentioned up to now, so the collaborative authoring and review system and the program management tool that you can see on the left hand side of the screen are only two components of the wider technical standards enterprise system, the TSCS, we put in place. So the TSCS is a cloud-based software system led by national highways with consultancy and project management support by WSP and development of the digital platform by another software developer called the CSI under our resp responsibility. We acted as the functional ar architect for the system identifying user stories and prioritizing activities of the software developers. So overall, the TSCS, the Technical Standard Enterprise Systems, contains, as I said, the CARS and JIRA, but also um, an index and archive with a single repository of information collecting intelligence on how things are used and where maintenance is required. There is a publication portal with a better search functionality and the ability to view standards in HTML supporting accessibility. There is a direct interface with the departure system, DAS, which is at the uh, top of the page, providing feedback loop between departures and requirements. And on the right hand side, you can see an open API, which, which will enable third parties to develop IT solutions, which can increase automation for the delivery of the strategy rule network. So this is 
everything um, in one place in terms of the tools that were introduced, innovative tools introduced. Looking at the people component, so coming back to our systems approach, on the people side, we took a systematic approach to dealing with transformation of the organization's processes and technologies. So that involved extensive stakeholder engagement through workshops, training, dedicated comms, both internally and externally. We trained over 350 technical authors in face-to-face -face sessions uh, across the UK and deliver webinars to keep all relevant parties informed. We also produce the leaflets, articles, papers. You can see some examples on the screen to inform the wider industry. So to summarize some of the key achievements from this work, at the start of the process, as I said, we had 394 documents and over 15,000 pages. Eventually, we published 155 documents with a significant reduction in page number and page count. Um, 272 was a new record of old style documents replaced in a single year, thanks to a digitized workflow, where historically the maximum number of process documents was about 30. We saved over 10 years of drafting work, considering historic rate of update. And there was a 70% reduction in drafting costs using PARS and about 40 million cost savings, considering both the reduction in drafting costs and the reduction in number of departures over a five year period. So the new style and format uh, of documents coupled with the enhanced uh, governance stages support agility and ease of update and the work was considered highly innovative on the approach and outcomes with several recognitions including being highly commended in the UK Highways Awards. This work is also providing the foundation for digital roads. Digital roads represents a step change in the UK transport infrastructure and is at the heart of national highways long-term vision for the strategic road network. The approach to digital roads considers how we can improve what we do today and in the future, embedding digital data and technology in everything we do. So digitizing technical standards is a key step towards such vision. So where we are now, what's next? Um, we are currently updating and digitalizing a companion volume set, which is called the Manual of Contract Documents for Highway Works. Um, this deals with the specification of products and materials and installation rules. So it's a companion volume set because the DMRB is all about the design and operations of the network, whereas these other volume sets is all about construction and operation um, of it. We are also exploring currently risks and opportunities for making the DMRB machine interpretable uh, to support automated compliance checks and input into tools for auto design automation. There's a lot of uh, research currently uh, ongoing to enable automated compliance checks and also ensuring that there is a direct link between the standards we use and how we can then um, extract value and automatically uh, do our checks as well as doing our uh, automated our design. So by the end of 2025, third parties will be able to interact and use content to create their own tools. And this is also linked to the next item, number three, which is to, we are currently exploring what artificial intelligence AI offers to us. Um, there's a dedicated company um, undertaking this, this task. Um, Oh, specifically on providing virtual assistance to help redraft clauses based on departures received, undertaking automated compliance checks linked to information from real schemes related BIM models, and ultimately using the information for preventive identification of non-compliance actions. So we are taking this as a fantastic opportunity to essentially support uh, the trends uh, and what is what is happening in the industry and helping the industry to move forward faster. So there are five key takeaways from this session from today. 
First of all, um, digitizing technical standards should be regarded as a system of interrelated components. I talked about the people, processes, and tools, and I just want to stress the importance of taking a systems approach to manage particularly complex areas like these, where you have a large number of documents to be, to be managed. And just focusing on one of these components is not enough to deliver a work which is satisfactory for the client and also for the users. The second important takeaways from this uh, session is that uh, in order for us to face future challenges and support trends in the construction industry, I'm thinking about, for example, future ready, decarbonization. What we need to do is to be agile in our approach to draft standards. So we need to essentially be able to um, easily update our standards, incorporating feedback from the supply chain or from relevant parties. We need the rigor in drafting. Uh, this is key to effective digitalization of technical standards. And the, the drafting rules are fundamental to that. Um, in a way, this is linked to the next point, which is IT tools should be regarded as enablers, not drivers. I heard several times uh, uh, people jumping to solutions and say, we need to digitize, we need to um, use the tools, which is fine. but if you don't have the right rules in place, the right governance, the tools by themselves don't really don't really work. They will not support an effective digitalization and digital transformation. And finally, there's an important point around um, change management. So an effective change management plan needs to be in place to implement and embed the change. That is essential because you have to keep people on board and ensuring that what you do really has a positive impact on the client and the users. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope you find it interesting and I'm more than happy to take any, any questions. So feel free to uh, type your questions in the chat box if you're not done already. Thank you, Maria Pia, Pia, for your presentation, fantastic presentation. So before moving into the Q&A period, as uh, Maria Pia just mentioned, you can log your questions in the question box, and also you can download the PDF version of this presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. I will start with the first question. What is the best practice for introducing sometimes complicated standards? That's a, um, a really interesting one. Um, I think it would be it would be useful to define what complicated means. Um, so this was actually one of the areas I explored um, in my um, in my PhD at the time, and I found it very useful to distinguish between um, hard and soft complexity when developing standards. Um, so typically, the hard complexity is all about the technical content, how it is presented, uh, if you're dealing with complex design methods, um, if you want to present the structure of the text in a particular way, whereas the soft complexity is all about people, their skills, the competence of the users, the competence of the standard writers. So the questions I, I think is about best practice for introducing complicated standards. So I believe this is something that can be produced and done on multiple levels during the drafting stage, pre-publication, after publication. So during drafting, you have to ensure that we've got the right drafting rules in place. Um, the, the audience of the document is clearly defined, and I found this an issue very often. Um, you have a clear statements of intent for what you're going to provide for your audience. Um, the standard writers have to have the right skills, and again, this can be an issue. Uh, my experience is that uh, in order to be a good standard writers, it's not enough to have the technical knowledge. There are also other skills that they have to have. Um, whereas before publication, you need to share awareness of the upcoming document. How will we make the life of users easier, what are the benefits, what is the key content, uh, because typically people see the introduction and publication of standards, particularly changing existing standards, a negative thing. Um, and if after publication, um, supporting materials should be shared to essentially support the usage of the standards. So this is how I would approach the introduction of 
complicated um, standards. Thank you. Hope that answered the question. That's, that's good, thank you. Um, you talked about being agile in the approach to develop standards. Have you explored how to maintain standards more effectively? From our experience is that it can be very time consuming. Yeah, and I do I do agree um, with this last comment. Um, maintaining standards can be a very onerous task, uh, particularly if you have a large portfolio of documents to manage, like in this case. Um, over the last year in particular, we've developed a new uh, approach um, to maintaining standards for our client. And the aim was to enable keeping the documents up to date, as well as collecting and managing feedback in the most efficient way. So we are now in the process of rolling out a new form um, on the national highways, the DMRB website, where people can submit their feedback. This will automatically generate uh, tickets in our program management tool, which I presented earlier today, the JIRA software. Um, and these tickets will be generated against the relevant documents. So technical authors will have visibility and control over all the submission received, the senders will be kept informed of the status of the submission and the feedback will be used to inform future document updates reflecting good practice and addressing users' needs. So um, we also took the chance of using this channel to collect general ideas from the supply chain, so not just standards related. Um, if there are any gaps identified, we are just finding a way of um, ensuring that the documents are maintained in time and that they do provide the best practice on what needs to be done. Thank you. Um, the next question is, can you clarify what the departure process is and the efficiencies occurred through this work? Accrued, um, sorry. I, yeah, I, I did mention the departures process a couple of times during this presentation. So. Um, Departures are um, uh, submissions which are done to, to made to clients where the constraints of a project don't permit the application of a standard. So it may be that this is a particular uh, area for the UK construction industry uh, where uh, clients uh, ask for a departure submission uh, if the supply chain cannot follow the standard rules. So in a way they are a value added mechanism to realize benefits from innovation, to challenge the content of a standard, and to also continuously improve the delivery of the work. However, um, what we experienced in the past was that not all departures were relevant, and they were simply adding costs on the supply chain and ultimately to the client. Um, so the DMRB, pro when we changed the, the style of the documents and when we also updated the, the process for managing departures, what we saw was a significant drop in the number of departures, uh, about 44%, and a direct cost saving of over 6 million per year, uh, which projected on a five-year period, which is the, uh, the period of, where the client evaluates the benefits, it gave over 30 million savings uh, thanks to a better management of departures. Fantastic, thank you. We have time for just last more last question more. Uh, so the, there's a question here about net zero and decarbonization uh, is an important trend. Have you considered that in the work you have done? Um, yeah, that's um, um, so. Let me just set the context for these. So typically, um, standards, client standards, and specifications. Um, have a really important role in facilitating decarbonization because they are the ideal vehicle to engage the supply chain at the earliest possible stage and to drive a positive change in the highways industry. In a way, they set the targets and provide a framework to develop and specify low carbon solutions. So at the time of the DMRB development, the focus was very much on sustainable development, um, so it was a specific area assessed for each document. Uh, but most recently, National Highways has defined its own zero, zero carbon ambition in line with the UK government commitments um, for reducing greenhouse gases by 2050. So now all documents under development um, will be assessed against sustainable development 
and carbon management. So when developing design rules, technical authors now are thinking about the hierarchy, build nothing, build less, build clever and build efficiently, which is the typical approach taken. And when specifying products and materials, um, they verify the existence of life cycle carbon data or um, a narrative on carbon performance of products. And this is all really exciting and it can have a huge a positive impact on the design construction operation of the network for many years to come. So very positive improvement here. Fantastic. Thank you, Maria Pia, for your presentation. Um, so please feel free to follow up with Maria Pia via the contact details shown on the screen. I would like to thank all attendees for joining today. Thank you for your questions and we hope to see you in future webinars. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.